Hi, my name is Dr. Trevina Lawali, and today we're going to talk about TMJ. What is TMJ? That stands for Temporal Mandibular Joint, which is basically the joint that comprises your jaw. Some of the uh, typical causes of this dysfunction include trauma, trauma such as car accidents, uh, blunt trauma, uh, whiplash. We'll have people that will come in and they just notice wear and tear and they don't exactly know how it started, but it's repetitive motion in nature. Welcome to Body Worlds. I'm Dr. Brian Abelson. We're going to use these examples of plastinates, which are just incredible models to demonstrate some of the biomechanics and the anatomy of TMJ. So let's just zoom in here on the structure over here. First, let's look at some of the anatomical structures here on the plastinate model. Just an incredible opportunity to see a lot of structures we normally would never be able to see even with dissection. Muscle on top of here called the temporalis, one of the muscles of mastication. If you go right across this entire area of here, you'll see that it'll connect down into the jaw. This is one of the main muscles for chewing. Another muscle on the side here called the masseter. Very, very important muscle of mastication over here. Basically, gives you the ability to close your jaw and chew. Another muscle at the front here called the digastric. Really, really important muscle. important concept here is what we refer to as the kinetic chain. Now what we're referring to here is a tension in one area here on the shoulder will go up into the neck and then into the jaw. But it can work in the reverse also. It can go from the jaw to the neck right down to the shoulder. Okay, so you may be wondering, what am I going to do if I do have a TMJ problem? Well, the key factor we're trying to get across to you here is that the type of treatment you're going to get and the area that's going to be treated is going to vary depending on where the individual restriction is. In other words, you could have restrictions in the shoulders, the neck, or the jaw. And even though the person may have exactly the same symptoms as someone else, they may have restrictions in a completely different area. So the practitioner has to work through the jaw, the neck, the shoulders, determine where they may have an adhesion or a restriction. What I mean by adhesion is an area where you may have built up a little bit of scar tissue, an area where one layer of tissue may not glide well over another, and actually sometimes you don't even know you have these restrictions until you get in there, work through the tissue, and you're going to, you're going to be able to feel this area. And sometimes the practitioner will get in and start working on it, and they'll say, I didn't even know I had a restriction in that area. And you'll, you'll start to notice this. And then they're going to apply certain techniques such as active release technique, Groston, other procedures that we use in our clinic, and they'll get in there, break up the restriction. But really, really important is that afterwards, you have to do appropriate exercises.